This is a comparison of two flagships from 11 years ago, the NVIDIA GeForce GTX 780 Ti and the AMD Radeon R9 290X. In this video, I will compare them both in old and recent titles. Let's look at how they're holding up years later and finally get an answer to the question which card aged better in the long run. This is the third and final video of the nostalgic trip back to 2013. If you haven't seen the past two videos, then make sure to check them out as well. In the future, I plan to make the same videos about the next generation, the GTX 980 versus the Fury X, so please support this video with a like and leave a comment if you'd like to see such content. And I have left links to the best GPUs of 2024 on offer right now for our viewers linked in the description, so check them out. Now back to the video, what did both flagship cards offer? Besides the obvious high performance you would have expected in their prime, each GPU offered its own unique technology. The GTX 780 Ti has been traditionally more expensive than its competitor, but why? It obviously can't be because Jensen wanted more cash. Nvidia had equipped its Kepler architecture graphics cards, both the 600 and the 700 series, with several of their own technologies unique to Nvidia at the time. So let's talk about the most popular ones. The first was GPU Boost. GPU Boost was a feature that was roughly similar to a processor's double boost clocks. This allowed the GPU to dynamically change the frequency depending on the load and temperature. The next one was the NVIDIA Frame Capture Analysis Tool. NVIDIA introduced the FCAT technique designed to analyze GPU performance by capturing frame data during gameplay. This would allow developers to test and identify any frame timing issues and pinpoint specific problems. This also paved the way to the more popular G-Sync we know today. While FCAT was used in analyzing and identifying issues, G-Sync was invented to enhance the gaming experience by mitigating those issues, rendering vertical sync obsolete to those with G-Sync supported hardware. Next was TXAA. This was another technology introduced to the Kepler architecture. This was a new anti-aliasing method that combined MSAA with temporal filtering to provide smoother edges and reduce jagged lines in textures. It also fixed the flickering in motion issue experienced when using MSAA and 2 times TXAA provided image clarity comparable to 8 times of MSAA with performance costs equal to 2 times MSAA. TXAA contributed to the understanding of temporal techniques and image enhancement techniques that influenced the development of DLSS. Shadow Play was also another feature introduced in the Kepler era that can also be called an equally interesting but more local solution. It allowed you to record gameplay without a high cost in performance. The difference was literally 2 to 5 FPS. It was gladly welcomed by the gaming content creators since it meant you didn't need a capture card if you were on a budget and you no longer resorted to capturing gameplay by using a camera but instead your GPU could do it for you. So what did AMD offer in the opposition side of things? Well, first of all, the R9 290X was significantly cheaper than Team Green's 780 Ti by a good $150. Secondly, the AMD flagship was sometimes ahead of the green one. After all, the R9 290X had a net performance of 5.63 teflops, while the GTX 780 Ti had only 5.34 teflops. Thirdly, Hardware-wise, the R9 290X was technically superior to the GTX 780 Ti since it came with 4GB of memory and a 512-bit bus versus the 780 Ti's 3GB and 384-bit bus. However, the bandwidth was actually higher for Nvidia simply due to the higher memory frequency. However, the R9 had more ROPs at 64 against 48 on the 780 Ti, which gave it an advantage both in higher resolution such as 4K and in multi-monitor configurations. Innovations also affected AMD's Crossfire and improved it allowing you to use multiple GPUs without additional cables and bridges. The new Crossfire technology acquired the DMA engine which allowed adapters to exchange data through the PCIe slot. AMD was confident that the PCIe 3x6 bandwidth was sufficient even for joint rendering in a multi-monitor configuration or 4K resolution. There were also innovations in the software like the Mantle API which later evolved into the popular Vulkan and DirectX 11.2 which provided future support for DirectX 12. The R9 also came with a new and improved GCN 2.0 architecture and this improved the asynchronous compute engines whose function was to improve the interaction between the game engine, the drivers and the hardware. 
as well as optimize the distribution of tasks. In many ways, this feature made it possible to implement support for DirectX 12 and later the Vulkan API while keeping the GPU more efficient. Despite being released in 2021, AMD's FSR also counts as a win for Team Red in this one. It works on the R9 to 90X and all other AMD cards of the past decade, apart from the Kepler GTX 600 and 700 series, which sadly are not supported. Only the Maxwell GTX 750 and 750Ti and above are supported since they were the first generation of Maxwell that later became the GTX 900 series. When it comes to the power consumption and the cooling requirements, some would argue that GPUs have become more efficient than the literal stoves that used to produce enough heat for the winter, but it would have been naive to assume the future would be better since there are rumors of an upcoming 600 watt card, which literally means an entire 600 watt PSU would power the GPU only. But anyway, back to our benchmarking. The GTX 780 Ti consumed slightly more than the R9 290X by 10 to 20 watts on average. But the temps on Team Green were better by nearly 10 degrees if you're talking about reference models. As for performance, after its release, the GTX 780 Ti had the upper hand in most games, but what about now, a decade later? The benchmarks were all done in 1080p, starting with the superposition synthetic benchmark scores where both cards nearly get a tie with a minimal difference in the score with AMD getting the slight lead. I also tested rendering in DaVinci Resolve and in this one the Nvidia card won. Now let's move on to the gaming benchmarks. If you like what you see, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. The first game is Crisis 3 on Ultra. In this game, Team Green takes the lead with variable differences in FPS depending on the scene, where the 780Ti takes the lead with anywhere from 5 to 15 FPS. Where we get 40 FPS on the R9, we get 50 plus on the 780Ti, so Nvidia wins this one. The next game is Tomb Raider 2013 on Ultra settings. The AMD flagship takes the lead and manages to stay ahead with 5 to 10 FPS differences. In scenes where the Kepler has 35 to 40 FPS, the Hawaii XT gets 40 to 45 FPS and manages to remain above 40 FPS, which is a win for Team Red. The next game tested is Watch Dogs, playing on ultra settings. This was nearly a tie, but the R9 still has the lead by 2 to 5 FPS over the 780Ti. The 290X produces 55 to 60 FPS, while the 780Ti stays around 50 to 55 FPS, with some noticeable stutters on the 780Ti as you can see on the frame time graph. Perhaps due to a lack of adequate VRAM since the 3GB on the 780Ti is maxed out, while the 290X shows the game utilizes more than 3GB and uses its entire 4GB of VRAM, so this is another win for Team Red. The next game is Assassin's Creed Unity, also playing on Ultra. The Kepler flagship takes the lead on this one, although the difference is quite small, 35 to 40 FPS for the 780Ti and 30 to 35 FPS for the 290X, with the performance difference sometimes going as low as 1 to 2 FPS. However, Nvidia takes the win on this one for remaining above 30 FPS most of the time, while the 290X sometimes dips below 30. Next is Far Cry 4 on Ultra. This was an Nvidia sponsored title, and you would expect it to be well optimized for Nvidia graphics cards, but the R9 wins anyway, with a steady 10 plus FPS difference where the 780Ti gets 60 FPS, the R9 gets 70, and in some scenes gets up to 90 plus FPS, so another easy win for Team Red. The next game is Battlefield 4 on Ultra. This is one of the games that ties both cards together with similar performance coming from both with a 1 to 2 FPS difference depending on the scene, with some scenes favoring the R9, but both cards remain above 60 FPS and are within 1 to 2 FPS of each other, so a tie on this one. The Witcher 3 was tested next, playing on high with Nvidia Halox on Ultra. With Nvidia Halox on, the 780Ti wins with a difference of over 10 FPS, with the 780Ti getting 50 plus FPS while the 290X gets 30s and 40s, but with Nvidia Halox off, the R9 does do a better job and remains above 60 FPS, giving AMD the crown once again. The next game was Battlefield 1 on Ultra. AMD wins this one by a landslide with a bigger difference of 10 to 15 FPS, and as you can see, the game does utilize more VRAM than the 780Ti, so that could be contributing as well, so it's a win for AMD on this one. 
next I tested Watch Dogs 2 playing on very high. Just like Watch Dogs 1, the 290X takes the lead in this one too, getting 40 to 50 FPS, while the 780Ti hovers around 35 to 45 FPS, and the frame time graph is smoother on the R9, and as you can see, the VRAM is also a limitation for Team Green once again, so AMD wins this one. The next game is Quantum Break playing on Ultra. If you've seen our video on the R9, then it's no surprise that the R9 290X wins against the 780Ti in this game too, with the R9 getting 50 to 55 FPS, while the 780Ti averages around 40 to 45 FPS. The next game is Shadow of the Tomb Raider on high. This is another game favoring the AMD flagship, where the R9 leads with 5 to 10 plus FPS with the 780Ti hovering around 35 to 50 FPS. And once again, the game seems to allocate more VRAM than the 3GB on the 780Ti, and I ran into an issue with the lighting in the jungle, which seemed to be glitchy on the 780Ti, despite the settings being exactly the same on the R9, so AMD wins this one in more ways than one. Far Cry 5 was next, playing on Ultra. The situation is slightly better, but AMD wins again with a 5 to 10 FPS lead throughout the tests. If you get 50 FPS on the 780Ti, you will obviously be getting 60 FPS on the 290X, so easy win for AMD. Battlefield 5 was tested next also on ultra graphic settings. Just like the other Battlefield games, AMD takes the lead on this one too, only this time with a much bigger lead. While the GTX 780Ti seems to be struggling at 40 plus FPS, the 290X is hovering around 55 to 60 FPS, and as you can see, the frame time graph is smoother on the R9, and the game is allocating more VRAM once again. So the R9 performs better with lows of 48 FPS, while the 780Ti dips below 30 FPS, so easy win for AMD once more. Apex Legends is next on low settings. At this point, you've probably started seeing a trend forming. AMD wins again, with a 5 to 10 FPS difference. Where the 780Ti has 100 to 120 FPS on average, the 290X has 110 to 130 FPS, so AMD wins again. Next game is Control on medium settings. This is another game with a noticeably large difference with Team Green getting averages of 40 to 45 FPS, while Team Red gets 55 to 60 FPS, so AMD wins with a 10 to 15 FPS lead on this one. Then next we tested Days Gone on high settings. Here, the 780Ti and 290X nearly tie, both with averages around 50 FPS, with a slight 1 to 2 FPS lead on the R9. Next is Cyberpunk 2077 on medium settings. Even without FSR, which doesn't work on the GTX 780Ti, the 290X bypasses its competitor, maintaining a playable 30 plus FPS when Team Green 780Ti has a cinematic 20 FPS. However, since FSR gives us a black screen when using Nvidia 700 series, we can only test it on the R9, and with FSR set to quality, you can get over 50 plus FPS making this an even bigger win for Team Red. Next is Mafia Remake on high settings. To no one's surprise, it's a 5 to 10 lead victory for AMD with the R9 290X averaging 50 to 55 FPS, while the 780Ti hovers around 45 to 50 FPS. Next is Atomic Heart on medium settings. Here, the performance is nearly a tie, with AMD once again taking the lead with a slight 3 to 5 FPS difference, but the win is a win nonetheless. Next was Counter Strike 2 on low settings. This is another close one, since both cards sometimes outperform each other, but Nvidia does often take the lead in this game with a measly 2 to 3 FPS, but both cards give out an acceptable 100 FPS, so it's safe to say it's playable on both cards. The next game is Doom Eternal on high. For a game filled with gore and action-packed scenes, it's safe to say the R9 290X vs 780Ti head-to-head is a literal bloodbath on Doom Eternal, with AMD butchering the 780Ti with double the FPS, and once again the VRAM is an issue as the game does allocate more than the 780Ti has to offer, making it a huge win for AMD, which is clearly more playable and remains above 60 FPS most of the time. The next game is PUBG on medium settings. The Battle Royale game seems to perform well enough on both cards, 
with Nvidia taking the lead with around 5 FPS on average, but both GPUs give a playable 80 plus FPS experience so you can enjoy the game with either of the two cards. We also attempted to test Elden Ring, Horizon Forbidden West, Uncharted 4, The Last of Us 1, Ghost of Tsushima, Hogwarts Legacy, Remnants 2 and Alan Wake 2, but they would not launch on unsupported GTX 780 Ti drivers and some wouldn't launch on the official AMD drivers either. However, due to the open source nature of AMD drivers, some of the recent titles mentioned above that wouldn't launch on the 780 Ti did launch on the R9 290X using community updated drivers and you can watch the full video of our review of the R9 290X using the links below. It's time to sum up the results. I won't even bother with scoring since it's clear that the Radeon R9 290X turned out to be the winner of this challenge and thanks to the community updated drivers kept alive by the modding community, the R9 has managed to remain relevant for longer and has definitely aged better than the GTX 780 Ti, especially due to its 4GB of VRAM that have given it the edge when games required more than the 3GB on the 780 Ti. The R9 had more ROPs, more memory, a wider memory bus, as well as support for DX12 and Vulkan. Support for asynchronous computing, all these features made the gap between the 780 Ti and the R9 to 90X bigger the more the years went by, and as you've witnessed, it has been a remarkable journey, and kudos for AMD for always offering competitive value and keeping Nvidia on its toes even 11 years later. If you've gotten this far in the video, thank you for watching. And if you're looking to upgrade your GPU or you're building a PC for yourself or others, then I've left links to the best offers on all the best GPUs of 2024 linked below. See you in the next one.